Hello everyone. It's just awesome to be here <laughs> on the planet. Awesome to be here in what used to be the Wellness Within classroom. Now it's uh, like a movie studio. So I'm really happy to be here and also happy to be able to share some Qigong with you today. If you don't know me, I'm John Brewer and I've been teaching here at Wellness Within for almost four years. It's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to do so. And in this new format, I'm pleased to be able to adapt and still to provide some Qigong practices for the Wellness Within community and since it's on YouTube, maybe beyond. So first off, before we get started on the practices I have for you today, I want to welcome you or just say hi and uh, send you my heartfelt wishes for health, happiness, and deep fulfillment of life. Because that's what I think Qigong offers. Qigong practices support health and well-being, not only physically, but emotionally, mentally, and also augment our spiritual practice as well. So what I'm sharing with you today is from the work of Roger Yanka, who wrote a wonderful book called The Healer Within, and the organization is called the Institute of Integral Tai Chi and Qigong, should you want to Google the organization. So I just recently completed a set of eight classes, uh, Zoom classes, and taught all of the practices incorporated in the book called The Healer Within. So if you like to read about things, about Qigong, that's a great book to get. Uh, and incorporated in that was how to go about practice. And there are many ways. One is to establish a daily practice of any length that you like, half hour, 45 minutes, or an hour. But another one, and as it turns out the most popular <laughs> among the people participating, was to create 10 minute routines. So we're going to do a 10 minute routine today. And of course, practicing with these, the practices I'm going to share with you, you can extend the time by just doing more repetitions or slowing the pacing down. The other beautiful thing about having a 10 minute routine is that you can pluck any one of the practices out and turn it into a momentary method. So any of the, what I share with you today stands alone as well as works well as a, a set routine. So um, it's very accessible and flexible. I hope you enjoy it. We did one last month. So take a look at that one. And now you're going to have a second, uh, second set of 10 minute routine. So let's go ahead and get started with the practice. Uh, the first practice we're going to do uh, is get ready for our practice by doing um, what we call the three and temple corrections. And everything we do, I'm going to model sitting as well as standing. This practice can be done sitting, standing, or even lying down. They're so very, very flexible that way. So what we want to do, whether we're sitting or standing, is establish a good posture. And the way that we go about that is standing with feet about shoulder width apart and then we have some flexibility in our knees. We're not really bending our knees but just slightly having a little flex there. We're tucking our tailbone under. This can be done sitting, certainly. Try it if you're sitting. Tuck the tailbone under so that we're straightening or aligning the low back and having a sense of connectivity to the, to the ground, to the earth. Then we as we're sinking down, we're also lengthening the spine upward. So visualizing creating some space between the vertebra. And as we do that, we're going to lengthen the seven top vertebra of the neck by drawing the chin in while lifting up on the top of the head. And then relaxing the shoulders down, creating a little space between the arms and the body. This is the posture that we want to move into when we're doing our Qigong. The second alignment is breath. And that's simply connecting with your breath, noticing it, and inviting your breathing to be deep and slow and relaxed. 
Let's take a couple breaths together. Notice any tension in your body and release what tension you can release while holding this posture. The third alignment is the focus of the mind. So Qigong is a form of moving meditation. We're going to be doing movement, we're going to be doing some breathing, we're going to be doing some self-massage and meditation. So the mind's focus, all that means is we're doing a mind-body practice and we're committing to keeping our attention on the practice as much as we can and when the mind does what the mind does and wanders, just coming on back home. Alright, so that, those are the intentful corrections. We're going to start with a beautiful Qigong warm-up called Ringing the Temple Bell. And this is going to feature, and so if you're seated or standing, just turn your body to either side and notice your spine twisting. Just turn as far as is comfortable. Notice the spine twisting, similar to wringing out a towel. Now the other side. So concentrate on the hips turning, the knees and legs staying stationary for now. I just felt I just had a little pop in my spine. It's just this much is really good. And if you're seated, this is going to work well. Now, now we're going to have the hips turn side to side. There's a little weight shift here if you're standing. So do your best if you're sitting, just turning the hips side to side, even if it's just a little. So the hips turn, the weight shifts, the hips turn, the weight shifts. If it's possible, go ahead and increase the momentum. And then you'll notice that without really utilizing your arm musculature, your arms are going to start making contact with your body. If you're sitting and it's not possible to get enough momentum to have your arms just naturally touch your body, it's an option is, is to just go ahead and allow your, your hands to touch your body. So we're incorporating self-massage, right? So as we're drawing energy from below the earth and above the sky and from the biosphere all around, we're actually drawing energy into ourselves. It's like we're a beautiful pump, like a chi pump, like a water pump. Drawing energy from above, below, and all around. And then, transmitting that energy through the palms of the hands, in my case right now, left hand liver, right hand stomach pancreas. Meanwhile, the spine is getting this beautiful spinal twist. And then with a little more momentum, or you can just choose to bring attention through the palms of your hands to your heart, thymus gland, chest, lungs, even thyroid gland. And just have this sense of sending pulses of healing energy into your organ system. So incorporating movement and self-massage. Just relax and enjoy. Modify if you're seated. Now bring your attention to your breath. See if you can deepen your breath as we continue moving. Ah, and it's A-OK -okay to make sound. Here we are more or less in a private setting, right? So oftentimes in a group setting making sound is a little hard to pull off, but it's so good for us. The sound could be a sound of just like relief or even enjoyment. Ah. Or it could be a groan or just letting off some steam, like a sigh of relief. Ah. By the way, the heart, the circulatory system, loves the sound ah. Although you can make any sound that you would like. That sound healing is a feature of Qigong along with movement, breath, self-massage, and meditation. And, even though we're moving and making sounds and tapping our body, 
as long as our mind is focused on what we're doing, we can go ahead and relate to it as meditation. So let's do this about 15 seconds longer without me talking. And then just allow your hips to gradually come to stillness. Your arms will settle. And take a moment to just notice your precious energy within and around your body. Just notice. So just a few minutes, maybe a few seconds of standing meditation, or as long as it feels right for you in between uh, practices. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. I did. I had a good time. So, um, I want to move on to the next uh, practice in our 10-minute routine. And that's going to be a breath practice called Shi Shi Hu, which translates as breathe in twice, breathe out once. So as we do this, we're going to, really it's one breath in, but in two phases. The first phase, we're taking the breath in deep into the diaphragm, so our bellies might protrude a little bit. The second phase of that same breath is drawing it up into the very topmost arena or area of the chest. So it'll be something like this, and we can use our hands to kind of support our pacing. So breathe in twice, and then out, long, slow, easy, full release. And then it can be in and out the nose. Breathe in twice, and breathe out once. Okay, let's relax for a moment. So if, if we do this practice slowly, it's considered to be restorative or calming. We'll try speeding it up as well in a little bit, and that's seen as a way to dispel stagnant chi or unused chi or anything obstructing or keeping our energies flowing freely. So let's do shi shi hu, breathe in twice, breathe out once together slowly, and I'll set our pacing by using my hands. Breathe in twice, breathe out once. Breathe in twice, and breathe out once. Two more without me talking. And relax for a moment. And just notice, even with these few breaths, you may notice some shifting of your energy. You might even be noticing a little dizziness. Now that's likely, maybe more likely to happen as we speed up. So that if you do notice dizziness or shortness of breath, then just slow down, relax, breathe slowly and evenly. So we'll try going a little faster and then we'll speed up from there. And any point it's not comfortable for you, just relax or slow down. Alright, and it's fine to breathe in the nose and out the nose. If you want to breathe out the mouth, that's okay as well. So experiment with these practices and make them your own. Okay, let's go. Shi Shi Hu. Speed up a little. A little faster. And we'll conclude slowing back down.
Ah, it's okay to make sounds. Ah, ah, and then relax and notice. Just take some time to notice. For some reason, it brought something like happiness up for me. It's just a natural smile coming. It could bring tears too. I mean, it's all chi. It's all life force energy. So I'm getting to enjoy a smile right now. But whatever surfaces is really perfect just to hold space and to practice in order to release what's not serving and invite in something healing or rejuvenating. <sighs> so that's the second of our practices in our 10 minute routine. Next we'll do a practice called reaching up and out. I'm going to start by doing it seated and then I'll stand up. So the movement, by the way, we're going to be reaching up and pressing up and reaching out and pressing out and then relaxing. So if you have any shoulder pain or arm or hand or wrist pain, modify by not necessarily going up as high as I am. Just go up to the point that you, you meet your edge staying in the comfort zone. If it's possible to stretch up further or even press up with some energy and effort, then that, that's great too. And then we're going to reach out, the arms are parallel to the floor, kind of pressing out if, if it's possible, or just taking it easy and being gentle with that. Okay, so we're going to do that, and in a little while we'll, we'll add some um, possible breathing pat a possible breathing pattern. But for now we want to just breathe in and out deeply, evenly flowing. So we start with the hands about belt high and then raise the hands palms up to the heart level. Then turn the palms up toward the sky a little at a time. Fingers are interlaced to begin with and then just press up as far as is comfortable. Press up, reaching up. It's called holding up the sky. And then, as we stretch our arms to the sides, we're pressing out. And then we're releasing. So, once we get to the heart, we are efforting. We're putting effort into it. Pressing up and pressing out. And then once we release from arms parallel to the earth, we are going for effortlessness, ease. So these are an example of Tai Chi or complementary forces, breathing in, breathing out. Effort, effortlessness are examples. All right, let's try that standing if you want, or continue doing it while seated. Hand, the feet are shoulder width apart, hands, palms up at belt level. Sink down, and then as slowly rise up as the hands come up, palms up, fingers inter, interweave, palms now facing up, and pressing up, and then pressing out. Sinking down, letting go, relaxing. Rising up. Palms facing up, stretching up, pressing up, holding up the sky. Looking up, pressing out, and then relaxing. Very good. Now, we're going to add some breathing. Coordinate some breathing. And, you know, you may need to, or you may choose to do the practice a few times just to get the movements so that they're easy to remember, and then try adding the breathing. So basically, though, with the breathing, what we're going to do is draw an in-breath as we're, the hands are coming up, and at heart level, as we are extending the arms up, we start a slow, regulated out-breath. So breathing out and continuing to breathe out until we get here and then relax and breathe in.
Keep breathing in, 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 and here we breathe out. Let's do this a couple times without me talking, and if the coordinating the breath is difficult, just breathe normally. Breathe in. Breathe out. Continue breathing out, regulating the breath. And then from here, relax and breathe in. One more time. And relax. And notice. Just take a moment for some meditation. Very good. And by the way, um, I'm going to supply a set of video links that I hope it's possible, I think it's possible, to include um, in the YouTube um, channel so that everything I'm doing for you today, there'll be a video link that incorporates or that involves my teacher, Roger Yanka. So you'll learn more about Qigong and then have an additional model besides what I'm providing here for you if you're interested in that. All right, now let's move to self-massage, which we, we can do seated. And um, you may already do this kind of thing, um, but this is basically a neck massage. And the way that, uh, that we do this neck massage, we start off by taking either hand and then palm against the back of your neck. So you can see my fingers are pointing in this direction and I'm gonna look in the same direction, like this. And then I'm simply going to turn my head slowly while I draw my fingers across the back of my neck until I'm facing the opposite wall. And I'm gonna repeat it Just draw the fingers across the back of the neck until I'm facing the opposite wall. Let's do two on the opposite side. Again, the palm is going to be in the back of the neck, the fingers pointing in the same direction I'm looking. As I turn the head, I draw the fingers across the back of my neck. Now once more. Okay, so what makes this Qigong is the mind's focus, the fact that we are having a good, strong, aligned spine, whether we're sitting, standing, or lying down, and um, that our breathing is, you know, we're doing some relaxed, even, deep breathing. You know, we're trying, all the time we're doing Qigong, we are initiating the relaxation response, and that's going to help, re at, the, at a minimum, re re release stress, and also create more resiliency in, our, in ourselves, physically and emotionally. So, um, let's, let's add a little bit to this practice of neck massage. As we are drawing the hands on the back of the neck, and turning our head, if we find a point of tenderness, we can stop there and start working on it. Just massaging it. You can rotate your head around. You find any little tenderness that could use some, some, uh, some ease or release any of this contracted energy, stop there and work on it. I've been doing this the last few days and, and I've really cleared up a lot of these little lumpy, contracted little muscles. There's one right there though. Still needs attention. So yeah, I like to sort of, yeah, it's not to hurt myself or make things hurt, it's to release. So I'm working with the contracted tightness in my neck. Okay. And we can also work with the occipital part of the skull right here 
at the base of the skull where we have these little protrusions. That's a great place to do some, um, put, put some gentle pressure there, especially if you're noticing a little snap, crackle, pop. You know, be gentle though, you know, nice and easy. If you notice any tenderness, just give it some love through self-massage while you're breathing deeply. Oh yeah, I still get some snap, crackle, and pop even though I've been doing this for a few days in a row now. It feels good. There's not much more to it than that. The video that I'm, uh, the video link I'm sharing of my teacher Roger goes into a little more detail um, and I, I uh, encourage you to take a look at that. It's just a few minutes long. We're going to go on to our final practice for this session. It's called Standing Like a Tree. It's basically standing meditation which can be done seated. So what's kind of fun about this one is that we're putting ourselves in the energy field of a tree um, and so if it's possible to go out on a porch or in your yard or somewhere where there's a tree, practicing um, alongside a tree can be really helpful. And so what we're really doing is you know, drawing upon an exemplar who really knows how to connect with the earth, right, with the root structure. So we can visualize having a root structure where we're really purposefully on intentionally drawing energy from the earth, the yin life force energy. And just like a tree whose canopy is high into the sky, you know, just embracing the sky and being embraced by the sky and receiving, you know, the energy of the sun. Every photon is, is almost like it's kissing the leaves and the leaves are turning sunlight into nourishment. So the energies of the above and the below mix and merge within the human, creating the alchemical treating our body as an alchemical vessel, supporting, you know, health and healing within our physical, mental, emotional, and even our spiritual beings. So that's sort of the imagery that goes along with this. And the way we'll do it, I'll stand for this part. Show the feet are shoulder width apart. We're going to sink down just slightly and we're going to tuck the tailbone under, but also have a sense of sitting down just slightly as if we're sitting on a ball of light or a beach ball. So something round. Now as we're standing rooted like this, we're also lifting up on the spine and drawing the chin in to, and lengthening the neck vertebra, creating an aligned spine and having that sense of connecting with the above simultaneously to connecting with the earth. So that's the posture we're looking for. Maybe you want to adjust your arms a little so you have a little space between your arms and your body. We're distributing our weight over the entirety of the bottoms of our feet with a little emphasis on the outsides of our feet, which will create a little bow or circular energy in between our legs. It's a very modified form of what is called the horse stance. So that's our posture. And then we're going to begin with our hands on our navel. And then just establish a long, deep, flowing breath in and out. Notice where you're carrying any tension and let it go as much as possible. Relax the arms to your side, sides. And this is the first posture for standing like a tree. Arms at your sides. Breathing. Sensing energy as if you were a tree. And then allow the arms to come forward a little bit. Not far, just a little bit out in front of you. I'm turning to the side to give you a sense of that. And, but it gives you again that sense of a circle, like a, like a ball of light. And so we could hold this posture for a minute or longer. 
as long as we want. Breathing and dropping into the present moment. And if thoughts come, it's fine. We just don't attach to the thoughts. Just like a tree, the white clouds passing in the blue sky. Just let the thoughts pass like white clouds in a blue sky. Eyes can be open or closed. And then to conclude, we simply release our arms to where we started. Just allow ourselves to lift up into a normal standing position and close by placing our hands over our navels. Noticing. And then perhaps if you like a namaste to one another, honoring one another's common humanity. And I want to conclude by thanking you for uh, taking advantage of the opportunity to do some Qigong with me. I'm hoping that some links are going to be embedded in this YouTube video as well, where you can click on standing meditation and all the other practices that we've done. Just click on there and see my teacher, Roger Yanka, or another equally esteemed teacher, you know, modeling what I've just shared with you. It gives you another resource. Uh, to conclude, though, I definitely want to wish you the very best in every way. Health, happiness, deep fulfillment of life, lots of love and connection, and I hope to see you again uh, through a YouTube video or one day in person. So I want to wish you, wish you well, and thank you very much.